We are in for a real treat tonight. We have the giant claw. Well, Sherry, me and Renee, we love us some crab claws. My cousin, Bujo, he makes some of the best claw crab claws down in the bayou for a million. I tell you what, we could call him up and get recipes if you ain't cooked them yet. I don't think he's referring to crustaceans. I don't know nothing about no crustaceans. I'm talking about them blue crabs and, and, and ones you catch down in New Orleans. A lot of folks catch the crabs in New Orleans. Oh, yeah, it's a huge industry. People go out and catch them all the time. I, I, I don't think that's what he meant. I think what we have here is a basic lack of understanding. Well, not necessarily, Grum. I think the linguistic relativity hypothesis applies here. It can apply all day long. I ain't going to hire it. No, 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 no. Uh, it's the sapphire Wharf hypothesis. What's the damn Klingons got to do with this anyway? He just don't speak good English. Hey. It ain't your fault. I don't parlay with no French either. No, no, no. He speaks perfectly fine English. Speaks perfectly fine English. The idea is that his native language is French, so his reality is a little bit different, as is an English speaker or a German speaker. Or a Klingon speaker? I sure. If James T. Kirk was here, he'd take care of that Klingon. Why have you been drinking, Grim? Ain't no Klingons around here. He'd wind up with a green chick, too. A green chick? We need a green chick in this show. Well, anyway, let me let me put this in terms that are maybe a little more familiar with, for you. Nos allons regarder un film sur la carcagne. La carcagne? La carcagne. La carcagne. La carcagne. La carcagne. La I think he gets it. Thank you, uh, Professor. Like, well, you're welcome. Like, I'm like, always here to help. Like, you know, that big mind of yours like, with all like, that arcane knowledge sure like, does come in like, useful. Like, yeah, and uh, speaking of which, you think I could get a little financial restitution like, for all my assistance? Well, I am fresh out of financials, but I can offer you a cup of Drogo coffee. Well, that'll work. That reminds me. It's time for a word from our sponsors. Look, what's the cotton? Look, at cotton. The big dogs. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Delicious things to eat. The popcorn can't be beat. The sparkling drinks are just dandy. The chocolate bars and the candy. So let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hi, Megan. Hello. This is Megan from Infinity Flux. Uh, Infinity Flux is Chattanooga's pop culture store. And she's got some special items for Halloween. Megan, why don't you tell us about what you got? So this is our uh, growing horror section. Of course, we have lovely NECA figures from all sorts of horror movies, all your favorite horror movies. And then we've got these really cool activity books in lately. These are coloring books for different activity books. Graham needs uh, one of those. You need to get one for your little two-year-old. They love it. Um, we, of course, have some horror plushies. And these, I love these. Oh, those are cool. Very specialty. Like yes. Almost prop replicas. This yes. One, uh, he actually has bike moves. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's very detailed. Uh huh. Myers figure, things like that. I love these big head. I love those. Decor. Yeah. 
but they're really awesome. So yeah, I love this is one of my favorite sections of the store. We plan on growing it even more. This is just like horror memorabilia, but of course we have horror comics and horror video games, horror board games, and all that over the store as well. Okay. Do y'all have any special events planned for Halloween? For Halloween, we always love to decorate the store. So I wait off as long as I can, but usually the last week of September, but all throughout October, we will have decorations. We're gonna have a new Halloween shirt this year. Last year we had a pumpkin with its guts spilled out this year. Oh, uh, I, I have one. Yeah, but I'll reveal it for you. We're doing a very spooky uh, black cat. So that oh. is this year's Halloween shirt design. Uh -huh. And then also uh, we always have a great graphic novel display. And what else are we doing this year? Halloween Comic Fest. So there's always an event in October where we give away free comics, just like giving away free candy, but it's free comics. Boy, you got to love that. Uh, if you want to see what else we're going to do spooky this year, maybe you can't make it by there, our actual physical store. You can go check us out, infinityflux.net. We'll make sure to have some spooky curated collections on our website as well. Oh, well, thank you, Megan. And uh, everybody come down and check out Infinity Flux. Do you need a place to put your stuff? Call South Pittsburgh Storage at 423-815-1180. South Pittsburgh Storage has 192 climate-controlled storage units conveniently located at 212 First Street in downtown South Pittsburgh. Do you need a place to store your RV or your boat? Call South Pittsburgh Storage. They have RV and boat storage units available. Do you need a moving truck? Call South Pittsburgh Storage. They have Penske trucks for rent. South Pittsburgh Storage has a state-of-the-art security system so you can sleep soundly at night knowing that your storage unit is safe and sound. Call 423-815-1180. Do you enjoy the South Cumberland State Park? It is a rock climber's paradise with many miles of hiking trails and dotted with waterfalls and caves. When you're here, make sure to visit Red Point Inn Restaurant and Mountain Gear Store, located on the historic Courthouse Square in beautiful Jasper, Tennessee. That's 30 Courthouse Square, aka Betsy Pack Drive. The phone number is area code 423-651-9869. Red Point Inn is open daily from 11 a.m to 9 p.m. and until 10 on Fridays and Saturdays. They serve brunch, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. They serve appetizers, espresso drinks, pizza, calzones, pasta, hearty sandwiches, wings, salads, soups, and desserts. And they have a full-service rock climbing shop located on the second floor. Order online for pickup or delivery at their website, redpointin.com, or on their Facebook page, at Red Point Inn. Listen to Hicks and Football Friday nights on River City Media. River City Media has the best tri-state sports coverage of high school and college sports with a local flair and a personal touch. Find us on Facebook at River City Media and YouTube at River City Media. It looks like we're going to need another straight jacket. Look at Let's watch the giant claw.
Once the world was big, and no man in his lifetime could circle it. Through the centuries, science has made man's lifetime bigger and the world smaller. Now the farthest corner of the earth is as close as a push button. And time has lost all meaning as man-made devices speed many, many times faster than sound itself. Here, near the top of the world, free men struggle with the elements to create some measure of defense to protect that self-same freedom. Distant early warning radar, sensitive electronic devices to detect the presence of objects in the sky, including bombing planes and guided missiles, and rain clouds and homing pigeons. New radar installations must be calibrated by the flying of controlled test flights to check the accuracy of the equipment and to chart a detection profile of the area in order to pinpoint blind spots the radar cannot penetrate. Bravo 8035, Angels 9. Bravo 7540, Angels 9. Bravo 7045, Angels 9. Test flight, test flight, this is Snowman 3. Give me a reading, over. Snowman 3, this is test flight, flying vector 340 degrees from IP. Angels 10, speed 400. How do you read me? Over. Everything checks but the altitude, Mitch. We read you at Angels 9. Altimeter reads 10,000 on the nose. Better check the level on the antenna mount. Roger. How about Mademoiselle Mathematician? She got enough numbers to feed into her machines yet? Do you have all the information you need, Miss Caldwell? One more run, please. Low level coming in. One more, Mitch. Vector, 105 degrees. Low. Roger. Turning 180 degrees. Low approach. This is test flight. Over and out. I didn't know pilots were allowed to do things like that. Not Air Force pilots, you're right. But Mitch is an electronics engineer. He may work for the government, but man, he kind of makes his own rules. So does a three-year-old child until his mother spanks him. Mother, dear mother, I'm ready if you are. I uh, must have left the switch on. An electronics engineer, a radar officer, a mathematician and systems analyst, radar operator, a couple of plotters. People doing a job well, efficiently, serious, having fun, doing a job. Situation, normal, for the moment. Date, the 17th of the month. Sky, cloudy, overcast. Visibility limited. Time, 1332 hours. A significant moment in history. The moment when an electronics engineer named Mitchell McAfee saw something in the sky. Something that was almost the beginning of the end of life on this earth. McAfee recorded instantly by radio the sighting of a UFO, an unidentified flying object. The radar officer replied that it was impossible. According to the radar scope, except for Mitch's plane, there wasn't a single solitary object of any nature whatsoever. Nothing in the sky for a radius of hundreds of miles. McAfee didn't care what the radar showed or didn't show. He knew what he saw with his own eyes, and he was determined to get a better look. McAfee turned, and so did the unidentified flying object heading toward him. There was no mistaking the urgency in McAfee's voice. Something, he didn't know what, but something as big as a battleship had just flown over and passed him at speeds so great he couldn't begin to estimate it. In national defense, it's better to be safe than sorry. The alert was sounded to scramble interceptors.
Well? Well what? Well, let's not play games, Major. Did your men find it? Mr. McAfee, if you were in uniform, I'd have you under arrest and facing general court-martial charges. Unfortunately, you're a civilian, and I can't touch you. What are you talking about? But I about? can send a report in on you, and I will. By the time I get through with you, Mr. Electronics Engineer, you'll be lucky if they let you test batteries for flashlights. Look, Major Bergen, I was flying a final calibration flight. I spotted a UFO, I reported it. Does that make me a criminal, a traitor to my country, or some kind of a psychopath? McAfee, you're an electronics man, an expert on radar. Sure, that's what they pay me for. If there was something in the air, something flying that you could see, would radar pick it up? Well, yes, Would but radar they... pick it up, yes or no? Yes. There were three radars on you. Every minute you were in the air, not one of them, not one, saw anything but you. Look, and major... You were told this, you knew it. Nevertheless, you persisted with your little joke. Easy now, Bergen. You continued to yell wolf until somebody pushed the panic button and scrambled a flight of interceptors. Great. Great, so your buzz boys flew around, they couldn't find anything, so now you're mad and want me to pay for the fuel they burned up or the time they wasted or something else real smart. The flight was scrambled and dispersed to cover as wide an area as possible. And thanks to your not-so-funny false alarm, Mr. McAfee, one of those planes didn't come back. Plane and pilot both are missing. Major Bergen. What? Yes. Yeah, yes. Call out the standby crews. You better reshuffle your duty rosters. There'll be plenty of sweat on this one. Look, Major, I'm sorry about the pilot, but... That was no false alarm. Oh, come me. off it, Mitch. You've done enough harm with your flying battleship. Just, just let it... Just a moment, Miss Caldwell. That call. A Transpolar Airlines plane is reported overdue and missing. Oh, no. Sixty passengers and a full crew aboard. We got a distress call from the pilot, and nothing. No more contact. Engine trouble? No. The pilot yelled something about a... a UFO. And the radio went dead. And our radars? Nothing. Nothing but the transpolar plane, alone in the sky. Well, we're finished up here, Major. Is our transportation ready? Plane and pilot to the field. Fly you straight through to New York. Thanks. Mr. Sally. back there. I thought the poop on the weather was we'd have it soft all the way into New York. Seems to be a local front, Mitch. How about flying over it? Can do. Wait till I call in. This is Air Force Zebra Love 7979 calling New York International Airport. Over. Zebra Love 7979. This is New York International Airport. Over. Altitude 8,000. Airspeed 250. Meeting unexpected storm activity at Adirondack region. Request permission to change altitude to 12,000. Over. Zebra low, 7979. Permission granted. Over. Zebra love, 7979. Roger. Out. Like I said, no sweat. Thanks, Pete. I'll put in a good word for you with the Major. Well, thanks, Lowe. <laughs> until I run into the computer, but it looks like the profile of it dips here like this for an extensive blind spot. Well, either that antenna is really tilted or we've got a topographical high spot here we didn't figure on that's shading the whole strip. 
Can you get that release map? Oh, yes. Thank you. Mitch. Mitch, come up here. What gives? Sit down, Mitch. Well? Something might be coming up. Such as what? Unidentified flying object. Flew right over us. Uh-oh, not you too. Well, I'll save the cracks. I've already called it into International. Mitch, I sure enough saw something like a cloud. Only it was moving too fast for any cloud. Why did our course from northeast? Two bits that never showed up on a single radar scope. What? Never mind. I don't see anything but sky. Neither do I, now. I lost it when it got right overhead. Where did that come from? We don't register a hat full of wind. Brother, that was more than a hat full. us up there. Yeah. A flying battleship that wasn't there. Hello! Hello! Here! Over here! Jack, I make him myself. Fine for the snake bite. Oh, Pierre. Mr. McAfee. That's right. Got the pallet? Yeah. Okay, boys. I made a reservation for you on a commercial flight into New York City. Sending a car to take you and the young lady to the airport. What about the wrecked plane? We've got orders to seal off the area. Real hush-hush. What happened? Did you tangle with a flying saucer or something? Oh, nothing so domestic as a flying saucer, officer. Just a flying battleship. Well, have a good time with your flying battleship. Your car will be here soon. Where's the plane, Pierre? North 14, past the road. Let's go, boys. Hello? Oui, this is the farmer Pierre Broussard. Oh, oh I am a man. General Van Buskirk for you, Mr. McAfee. Uh-oh. Feel another snake bite coming on. More medicine. Well, flying battleship, pink elephant, same difference. You really should try buttermilk instead. I said it looked like a battleship, not that it was a battleship. Should have called it an overgrown adding machine, then at least you'd have believed me. General Buskirk. McAfee here. Yes, sir, I'm aware that the pilot called in a UFO. No, I didn't see anything myself this time. 
Neither did Miss Caldwell. Oh, the radar picked up nothing but our plane in the area. Well, I was kind of expecting that, too. Joke. False alarm. Look here, General, what kind of an infantile jackass do you take me for? I tell you that... Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. When the shepherd cried wolf, they believed him. The first time, at least. Civil Aeronautics Board is sending up an investigating team first thing in the morning. So is the Air Force as soon as the CAB is done. When we get to New York, we're to keep ourselves available for questioning. This glass must have a hole in it. it keeps disappearing. <laughs> How's the jug holding out, Pierre? You like Pierre's Applejack, oui? Ah, perfect antidote for snake bite, thunder, lightning, and disbelieving generals. Fill her up, Pierre. Something scared the animal. Safe, you're in the house. Cacagna. It was the Cacagna. I saw her. <laughs> What's a Cacagna, Pierre? Come on, tell us about it. It's just a devil in the storm. The face of the wolf and the body of the woman. With wings. Bigger than I can tell. You probably saw an eagle, Pierre. Oh, no. It was La Cacagna. La Cacagna. Oh, I remember. Now I read it somewhere. It's a superstition, a, a legend that the French Canadians started and came across the border with. Yeah, it vaguely rings a small bell with me, too. It was probably just the lightning in the storm, Pierre. You just imagined the whole no, thing. No, no, I saw La Cacagna. Here, take another swallow of this. Pierre, he thinks he saw something weird in the sky. I saw her. I saw La Cacagne. He can't get it out of his head. Yeah, I know. I live up this way myself. There's a lot of the old folks around here believe that yarn. But this is the first time I ever heard anybody claim he really saw the old witch. You come to take us to the airport? Yeah, car outside. Oh, I hate to leave him like this. Now, don't worry, ma'am. Joe here will stay with him. We'd better hurry. They're holding that plane for you. Come on, Sally. They're holding a plane for us. We'd better get with it. We haven't even thanked him. I'm afraid the social amenities won't mean very much to a man in Pierre's condition. He's right, ma'am. You'd never get through the way he's scared stiff right now. Scared? So he thought he saw a big bird. Why should that paralyze him so with fright? Didn't he tell you? Tell us what? The legend. According to the story they tell, if you see this big bird, it's a sign that you're going to die real soon. <laughs> that plane's waiting. We better go. Okay, Sergeant.
case you take is better than you give. A many-faceted creature, this Mr. McAfee. First engineer and pilot, and now lover and poet. Oh, the line of poetry was from Shakespeare. I know, but where did that impulse come from? Well, I feel maybe. I like baseball. Or maybe just sitting next to a pretty girl. That's enough in itself sometimes. Even sitting next to Mademoiselle Mathematician? Or should we stick to the baseball reference? Mm, there are figures and there are figures. Inescapable logic. Corny, but true. You almost overwhelm me. Almost? Mm -hmm. Well, let's finish the job. Look at that moon. Speaking of uh, baseball and left field, somebody warned me that you make up your own rules. Whoever said that's no friend of mine. But he's a friend of mine. Sabotage. Oh, much too dramatic. Let's stick to baseball and say instead, out, oh, trying to steal second. Back to the bush leagues, finished. A quitter, I knew it. No fight, no spirit. Of course, the umpire could always reverse her decision. No, no shortcuts. Must follow the pattern. See, first the minor leagues and then the major leagues. I stick to the rules, Mitch. Sorry about that. Why be sorry? You can always. Pattern. Hmm? Pattern. What's the matter? Pattern. I need one of your maps, the orthographic projection, the pull to equator. Give it to me, will you? Sure. I think I have it here somewhere. Ah, oh, here it is. What's that? Open your map. Now, where I sighted the UFO, where the search plane disappeared, the transpolar airliner, our plane at Pierre's, and finally, the Navy patrol plane. Well, you were muttering about a pattern. Well, see it? Well, no. No straight line, no curve, nothing. Wait. Perfect pattern in time and distance. Each incident, each cross, later than the one before, each one further out in the spiral from the center. You mean something, something in the air flew a pattern like that? Yeah. Something I saw. Something that flew over and passed me in the air. Well, it would have to be traveling at incredible speed to cover all the distance and the time involved. What? Something that seemingly destroyed four planes and barely missed you the first time. Yes. Mm. Something like your flying battleship? Okay, forget the whole thing. Oh, well now, Mitch, be reasonable. Why that pattern just to knock down a few scattered planes? And what? A meteorite? Impossible. A guided missile? Well, that would stop with the first plane it hit. And who would launch it, and for what reason? No, Mitch. Coincidence, yes, but pattern, no. Here's your map. Well, you are a child. Mitch, think. If there was anything flying this kind of a pattern, why, it would be tracked by dozens of different radars. And none of them spotted a thing, so what? Well, maybe it was Pierre's Cacarnier, with a head of a wolf and a body of a woman with wings as big as I can tell. There's no need to be sarcastic. Look. Would you two mind being quiet so the rest of us can sleep? Thank you. Sorry. Maybe I was being childish. Mitch McAfee, flying Sherlock Holmes. I think you did make better sense with your poetry than you did with your detective deductions. 
I know another poem. Oh? Be plain in dress and sober in your diet. In short, my dearie, kiss me and be quiet. Date the 18th of the month. Sky clear, light clouds. Visibility unlimited. Time, 0.1815 hours. A CAB plane flies toward the scene of the previous day's crash involving Mitchell McAfee. On board, four members of the Civil Aeronautics Board investigating team and a pilot. Time, 0.816 hours. Another significant moment in history. Once more, a frantic pilot radios in a report on a UFO. A bird. A bird as big as a battleship, circling and preparing to attack the CAB plane. facsimile thereof. General Buzzkirk's respect, sir. You'd like to see you right away. Oh, I have a heart, Captain. I got in late last night. I just about fell asleep when you woke me. Sorry, sir. The general says it's urgent. So is my sleep. My orders are to bring you to the general's office at once, even if I have to take you into protective custody. Okay, Captain. Don't get in a tizzy. You keep your shirt on. I'll go get my pants on. My sighting. The search plane, the transpolar airliner, our plane at Pierre's, and the Navy patrol plane. Too much, and it fits too well to be just coincidence. There have been two more since the Navy plane. Private plane here last night. And a CAB plane with four passengers and a pilot here. All following your theoretical pattern, smack dab on the nose. No radar tracks, I suppose. As usual, since you started this crazy nightmare, nothing except about the planes. Did the pilots report anything? Not a word from the pilot of the private plane, but the CAB pilot reported a UFO. Did he say what it was? Yes. A bird. A bird as big as a battleship circled and attacked the plane. <laughs> Believe me, Mr. McAfee, this is no joke. Oh, no. That plane was completely destroyed, and all five men on the board seem to have completely disappeared from the face of the earth. Now, you're an electronics expert. Could there have been anything that big up in the sky and not be picked up by radar? Impossible. But I saw it myself. Yes. Three men reported they saw something. And two of them are now dead. Well, that makes me chief cook and bottle washer in a one-man bird watcher society. Mr. McAfee, this is vitally important. Did you get a good look at it? No, it was just a blur as it went past. Oh, I wish I'd had a camera with me. Camera? General Buzzkirk, before I went out on this radar assignment with Mitch, I was doing Earth curvature calibration work. Well, how does that help us on this? Well, we use film strips, photographed from inside test rockets and from fixed cameras and observation balloons. Sally, maybe you've got it. If those balloons are still up, there's a bare possibility they photograph this thing, whatever it is. General Edward Considine, Pentagon. 
Priority, fast. This film and all the information pertaining to it and the bird are classified as top secret. Notify all agencies and personnel involved who have handled the project or will handle it. Yes, sir. Johnson. Uh, yes, sir. Put the entire command on combat readiness right away. Notify the Pentagon and have them tell General Considine I'm on my way. Yes, sir. Colonel Tyler Field, line one, please. Oh, Nate, Nate, uh, Buskirk here. Warm up my plane and file a flight plan for me to National Washington. Right. Oh, coming now. Two extra passengers. Okay. You two are coming with me to Washington. Ms. Caldwell, Mr. McAfee. You know, Professor, you really ought to do something with it. Oh, he'll be fine. It's hard. Plus, he feeds himself. He fits in well at Arkham. He's mostly housebroken. Well, that's a relief. Yeah. So, you know, this movie was based on a real French-Canadian legend. Well, evidently, it spread to Louisiana. It's a lot like our legend about the Thunderbird. Absolutely cryptid or folklore. That's that's always the question. Hey, it's all a bunch of poppycock. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, present cryptid or company accepted, Renee. Yeah, you know, Ray Harryhausen is supposed to do the effects in this movie. This is not Ray Harryhausen's work. Well, no, no, no. The studio cheaped out and I uh, got it from a shop in Mexico. They said they only paid $50. Well, they paid too much. Oh, there's not a shred of evidence to support that. You know, the master is not pleased that you're showing this. when You could be showing a Bela Lugosi movie. You know, perhaps you should point out to the master if Bella Lugosi did his fair share of Ed Wood Jr. movies. You know, I don't think you should be antagonizing this master. Oh, don't worry about it. Peter Cushing turned him into a pile of dust in the Satanic Rites of Dracula. Anyway, the special effects in this movie were so bad how bad were they? The cast had not seen La Carcagna. And when this film premiered in Jeff Mara's hometown, he noticed the cat he noticed the people watching at the theater laughing every time the giant bird appeared on screen. La Carcagna? Yeah. He snuck out so nobody'd recognize him, went home, and set to drinking. A reasonable response. I think so. Look again, you. Look again. Look, look, look again, you know. <laughs> look again, you know. I think we may need to tend to Louie. Um, word from our sponsors? Look again. Look again, you. Look again, you. fall your fears brought to life feel the fear if you dare hello my
my cedar glade boos and booettes. Count Rahoon here, real life vampire and horror host. Are you looking for the perfect way to start off your spoopy season? Well, look no further. I know, I'm not that much to look at. But my friends and I, including my dear friend resident forest troll Scufflemus Treeman, fresh off of his stint from America's Got Talent, will be here at Cedar Glade Brews on October the 4th and the 11th at 9.30 p.m. And we're going to have a B-movie monster party. We'll be hosting the Beast of Yucca Flats on October the 4th and the Monster of Piedras Blancas on October the 11th. And if you're a fan of Mystery Science Theater 3000, you don't want to miss either of these because Scufflemus and I are going to do a live riff track. It's going to be a great time. And hey, they've got beer. These things are a lot more enjoyable when you drink lots of beer. Well, hey, folks. It's here's Grim, and I bet you're looking for something special for Halloween. And I've got something special from you from Twisted Hippie Goods. Everything is handmade with professional grade textile dyes, so there won't be no fading or no bending. So uh, check them out at Etsy.com shop Twisted Hippie Goods. At Hippie Fest in Dayton on September 14th, the Uncommon Market in Asheville, North Carolina, September 29th. And for those out-of-state folks, the Etowah Fall Festival in Etowah on October 5th. It's okay, Louie. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. Oui, oui. Oui, oui. Look out, Kaiba! There's some sort of bird, all right. There's no question of that. Miss Caldwell, is it possible that this, um, this bird has been flying in blind spot areas that our radar can't pick up? No, sir, I checked carefully. At least 10 different radar sites should have tracked it. Mr. McAfee, could speed or altitude affect the ability of our radar to pick it up? No. There's no scientific or any other kind of reason in the world why our radars don't track it. They just don't. Period. And what you are saying in essence is that black is white and two and two make six. Look, General, I didn't invent this flying nightmare. I just saw it and reported it. The General understands, Mr. McAfee. He's not blaming you for anything. Relax, man. Relax? When do we stop relaxing and start doing something? Good sense isn't confined exclusively to civilians, Mr. McAfee. We know how to take care of ourselves and the country. Easy, Van, easy. Take it easy. There's a general air alert on this very minute, son. Hundreds of planes from every command are combing the skies, searching for this overgrown buzzard. We'll find it all right, never fear. And when we do, General, then what? Yes? Good. Where? Okay, this is official now. Pass him the word to shoot it down. No questions, no games, no stalling. Just shoot it down. Yes. Give me a tape on all air-to-ground and air-to-air channels and pipe it through a hotline to me here. One of our squadrons just spotted it. I've ordered them to attack and shoot it down. Our planes are armed with cannon, machine gun, and rockets. This should be the end of the big bird who was there that wasn't. You'll be able to hear it as it happens. This is Easy Baker, squadron leader. Target below and to the side. See it? Yow, holy Toledo. I've seen some mighty big chicken hawks back on the farm, but man, this baby takes the cake. Honest to Pete, I'll never call my mother-in-law an old crow again. This is Easy Baker, squadron leader. Peel off on signal. One pass and then you're on your own.
squadron leader. It's got one of the planes. I must be losing my marbles. This isn't for real. Bullets, rockets, nothing touches it. <laughs> Easy Baker squadron leader. Charlie hit the silk when the bird got his plane. Now it... Charlie's gone. Shooting all. It don't make sense. Like... Like we're hitting a battleship with a slingshot. Let's go after another plane. Look out! Mission's a washout. We're gonna head for... No! It's coming after me! No! No! Machine guns. Cannons. Rockets. Nothing touched it. Those pilots. We'll find it all right, never fear. The end of the big bird. You're right, Miss Caldwell. When we find it, what then? Phase two off standby. Operational. Notify the Joint Chiefs. Yes, sir. It doesn't make sense. It's just a bird. A big bird. Guns, cannons, rockets. It's just a bird. Sure, just a bird. Ten million dollars worth of radar can't track it. Enough firepower to wipe out a regiment can't even slow it down. Sure, it's just a bird. Well, what are we going to do? Just sit around here and weep? Oh, climb off our backs, We're not McAfee. crying, McAfee. And we're not running away. But it's hard to come up with answers when you don't even know what the question is. Being flipped doesn't help any. I'm not criticizing either of you, or the Air Force, or those guys who just died trying to shoot that thing down. I'm not being flipped, and I'm not wisecracking. I'm just scared. We all are, I guess. So let's face that and then try and do something about that bird. Any suggestions, McAfee? Sure. Electronic spitballs. Van. Close, General, close. Only not electronic spitballs. Atomic spitballs. Yes? Phase two operational. All units alerted and ready. Good. Call for you, Dr. Carol Neumann at the research lab. Now take it on two. This is General Considine, Dr. Neumann. Say that again. Good, good. You stay where you are. I'll be right over. Research lab's been kept right up to date. They've been working on the wreckage of that CAB plane and the plane that you two cracked up in. Find anything new, Ed? They think they've figured out what that bird is and where it came from. About those atomic spitballs, an hour before your plane landed in Washington, I ordered guided missiles with atomic warheads made ready for every launching site in the country where the fallout pattern makes it safe to explode them. The order you heard me give to make phase two operational was an order to fire those missiles the moment that bird is spotted anywhere. General, I'm sorry, I guess I... Don't apologize, son. I admire your spunk and you keep climbing on our backs whenever we've messed up any of the detail. Ma'am? Sorry, Mac. I guess we're all trying to do our best. Uh, you two better come along. You're up to your ears in this thing anyway. Come on, let's go. The atom is the basic building block of all matter. And the atom this model represents is like every atom as we know it. The nucleus is positive. The electrons are all negative. In this respect, it has been maintained that all atoms are alike, but this is wrong, all wrong. According to the law of electrodynamics, all nature is symmetrical, it is in balance. And if there is matter, then there must also be antimatter, a symmetrical mirror image. Now here we have a positive nucleus, negative electrons. In the reverse, we must obviously have a negative nucleus with positive electrons. 
Science has proved that this is so. Not in this Earth, nor in this solar system, but somewhere in the universe, there are stars, planets, whole galaxies made up of antimatter. What well, do you mean to say, Doctor, that this, this bird is made of antimatter, that it's reversed, uh, inside out, a mirror image, as you call it? Just a minute, General. Uh, doctor, it's been proven that antimatter exists, but it's also been proven that whenever it comes in contact with ordinary matter, they annihilate one another, blow up. Now, why didn't the bird explode when it was hit or when it touched something? Uh, you are both right and wrong. The bird itself is not antimatter, but the bird unquestionably radiates some sort of force, an energy screen, some invisible barrier, and that energy screen is antimatter. Guns, cannons, rockets. No wonder nothing touched it. Stuff hit the antimatter screen and blew up before it could get close. Mitch, this explains the failure of the radar. Yeah. No reflecting surface. The radar waves wouldn't bounce off. They'd slide around. So with no echo, no tracks. Dr. Neumann, a uh, couple of questions. All this isn't just guesswork on your part. No, it is not guesswork, General. Evidently, this bird is able to open that antimatter screen to use its beak, its claws, its wings as destructive weapons. Now, here is part of the wreckage. Examination by a staff of scientists has told us the whole incredible story. It has been checked and double-checked. Is there anything else, General? Yes, Doctor. Where did this bird come from? Here is a piece of feather from the bird found in the wreckage. At least we call it a feather. We don't know what it is, only what it looks like. It has defied chemical analysis, the electroscope, every conceivable test. It contains no substance known on the Earth today no element recognizable by man. Finding that out was expensive. How so? We had several of these feathers. This is the only piece left. As a last resort, we tried testing them in electronic analyzers. Look. That bird is extraterrestrial. Comes from outer space from some godforsaken antimatter galaxy millions and millions of light years from the Earth. No other explanation is possible. A van will fly you two back to New York. I would appreciate it if you'd hold yourselves in readiness and of course you understand that everything that you have seen and heard is classified. My command is ready, Ed, and waiting at the end of a hot line. Just phone. <laughs> Just a uh, phone, Van? Well, I'll need help. All the help I can get. We all will. The only trouble is that the last time I talked to a chaplain, there wasn't any telephone line to the one and only place where we can get the kind of help that we need. General Considine, this is an emergency. Get me the Secretary of Defense. Up to now, only one man had seen the bird and lived. Among those who knew of it, its existence was a closely guarded secret. But even as arrangements were made for an emergency meeting of the President, the Cabinet, the National Defense Board, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, even then the bird revealed itself to the world at large, and complacency quickly turned to panic. Panic, terror, and horror. No corner of the earth was spared the terror of looking up into God's blue sky and seeing not peace and security, but the feathered nightmare on wings.
I worked half the night running your figures through the calculating machine. The results are what you want. Good. Thanks. Mitch. Hmm? Oh. Thank you. Really. For two days and a night now, ever since we got back from Washington, you've had your nose buried in all those papers. Figuring, calculating. Mitch, you've got to stop to sleep and eat. No, I've been busy. What you're working on, have anything to do with the bird? Mm-hmm. To destroy the bird? Uh-huh. Well, will it work, Mitch? I don't know. I honestly haven't the faintest, foggiest idea. It's one of those cockeyed concepts that you pull down out of cloud eight somewhere in sheer desperation. Said anything about this to General Buzzkirk or General Considine? And have them gently remind me to stay in my own backyard? No, thanks. What's the difference? There's only a million to one chance it'll work. It's just something to do instead of this deadly sitting around and waiting. Mitch. I've been thinking about the bird, too. Yeah, you and everybody else in the world. Ever stop to wonder why the bird came here? Could it have been for food? I mean, does the bird eat, in the sense that we understand eating? Well, Dr. Neumann says that it absorbs energy from the things it destroys, including humans. Sort of a molecular osmosis. Could it have come here to rest? If it did, it sure shooting isn't. Right. So far as we knew, the bird just kept flying around the earth. Always flying, never stopping. Well, that's what bothered me, so I called General Buzzkirk. Hmm? Mitch, remember Pierre Broussard at the farm? Yeah. Him and his like a Kanye. Or whatever he thought he saw. Just goes to prove what they always say. Truth is stranger than fiction. Well, this was no fiction. Pierre did see something. He saw the bird. 12,000 feet up at night in a storm. No, the bird came down to earth. But you just finished saying that... Well, General Buzzkirk told me they found the mark of a giant claw in a field next door to Pierre Broussard's farm. And I know why. The bird came here to build a nest. Nest. Eggs. More birds. It's got to be true. There's just no other reason for it. General Buzzkirk, McAfee calling. This is urgent. Maybe gather up those papers for me, will you please? Take these two. General Buzzkirk, McAfee. Now, please don't argue or ask for reasons. I'll explain later. It's desperately important. I need a fast plane and then a helicopter. Please, please, General. Believe me, I know what I'm doing. Pierre Prezard's place, the farm. Right, we're leaving right now. Sally's with me. Yes, we'll go straight to the airport. We interrupt this program for an important announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, speaking from Washington, Lieutenant General Considine, United States Air Force. We are faced with a crisis. A crisis for which all the nations of the world in unprecedented cooperative action have found as yet no solution. Until we do, we shall not rest. We have tried every weapon in the arsenals of the mightiest armies on Earth. They have proven worse than useless. Atomic hydrogen weapons capable of wiping cities, countries off the face of the Earth, are completely ineffective against this creature from the skies. Two days ago, all aircraft were grounded. Deprived of its source of food or energy, however the bird survives, the bird began a series of attacks on the ground in a fantastic orgy of destruction never before seen. Nothing has been safe from attack by the bird. Cattle, horses, fields, homes, trains, all manner of transportation. It has become obvious that the bird is attracted by movement. Accordingly, your government, 
and all the governments of the world had declared a state of emergency and instituted martial law. In addition to grounding all aircraft, all surface transportation, cars, trucks, buses, trains, ships at sea, all such traffic must be halted at once. The movement of food and essential supplies will be handled by the armed forces. Blackout conditions will be observed from sunset to dawn, every night until further notice. Movement of any sort on the streets or highways during the daylight hours must be held to an absolute minimum and only where it has been authorized as essential. You have just heard General Considine speaking from Washington. Stay tuned here. Mitch. Well, that plane is waiting for us. We've got to get up to Pierre's place. Decides to do it again. The guns. Two with the B-378 Magnums. They'll stop anything. Anything, Mitch? Well, anything but the bird, but we're looking for eggs. Without antimatter energy screens, you hope. Like a Kanye? No, Peppy, not like a Kanye. A million times worse. Let's get out of here. All right. No sign of any egg. Well, it might be somewhere down in there. The way to find out is to go down there and look. I can't can you! It's our only chance. Yeah. You're not stay. Pierre, come back. Uh -huh. I'm from Montana.
Kanye. He was right. Seeing it did mean his death. Yeah. I'll alert Washington. They'll get out search parties everywhere in the world, wherever the bird has been sighted. Just on the off chance that there might be more eggs found and destroyed. That much we can do. Well, let's get back to the city. Oh, that bird around is too dangerous to fly. We'll leave the chopper and take Pierre's car. He won't be needing it. Lights and fast. Maybe he didn't hear the proclamation. I'll flag him down when he tries to pass. Hey, Daddy, yo! Get that tin can off the road! <laughs> Come on, man! <laughs> hey, man, who's afraid of the big bad bird? Put out your lights! Get off the road! Don't worry about us. We got Saltbird's tail. <laughs> hey, watch out for that salt. Don't get it in the carbs. Oh! <laughs> Come on, let's go. Crazy kids, they don't know what they're doing. Dig you later, Gator! Hey, Daddy, don't call us, we'll call you! Badly hurt, but he's alive. The girl's unconscious. There's a town up ahead for the hospital. We'll take him there. You and I are going into Washington tonight. I'll bring the car over here for the kids. Caldwell McAfee, I'm a busy man. I hope this isn't some sort of crackpot wild goose chase. You and me both, General. Well, it's your dime, boy. What is it you want to show me? How to shoot the bird out of the sky. Some new type of weapon? No, with regular guns, bullets and bombs, anything you want. McAfee, I told you that I haven't got time Mr. to Mr. listen. General, this idea of mine may prove to be as phony as a three-dollar bill, but I still think it's worth a listen. Well, go ahead. Now, I don't care whether that bird came from outer space or Upper Saddle River, New Jersey. It's still made of flesh and blood of some sort and vulnerable to bullets and bombs. If you can get past that antimatter energy screen. Right. That's exactly what I think, what I hope I figured out how to do. I have just invested a dime of my own, boy. Keep talking. Now, this is a blow-up I had made of a bubble chamber photograph. The chamber was bombarded with high-speed particles. Result? A photograph of a trail made by what is known as a Mu Mason. But notice this hole, this gap right here. This gap is one of the most exciting and significant recent discoveries in all science. You probably know about it, Dr. Neumann. Yes, yes, the formation of a temporary masic atom, the Mu Mason with a hydrogen nucleus. Right, but... Mu masons are 210 times heavier than electrons, which means that in a masic atom, the electrons revolve around a nucleus at just a small fraction of the ordinary distance in the normal atom. I know you don't understand all this, General, but stick with me. Now, the masic atom is extremely small, small enough to sift through the electron defenses of the ordinary atom and fuse with its nuclei. Atoms of matter or antimatter. Right, Doc. Now, if this thing of mine works and we can get close, real close, 
and bombard that bird's antimatter energy shield with a stream of masic atoms, I think we can destroy that shield. The bird would be defenseless then except for beak, claws, and wings. You could hit it with everything but the kitchen sink. We've got kitchen sinks to spare, son. Do you think you can do it? Well, I've kicked around some ideas. I'm not sure they'll work, but it's certainly worth a try. Well, what do you need? This lab, Dr. Neumann and his staff, Sally here to help with the math, and a blank check for supplies and equipment. It was yours before you finished asking for it. McAfee time is running out. Today, tomorrow, a week from now, maybe. Besides, I'd hate to lose that dime I've got invested in you. Good luck, son. Well, anybody ready for some work? Work or maybe some magic. What we need is a miracle. Here it is. A miracle. A dime's worth a miracle. This weapon would have to create masic atoms, not as rare and isolated laboratory phenomena, but in tremendous quantities. Eject them through some aiming and propelling device so they could travel indefinite distances through the air to arrive with sufficient speed and insufficient numbers to bombard and destroy an antimatter shield. Truly a miracle of science. Especially since the scientific total life expectancy for a masic atom, up to now measured in laboratories, had been one two millionths of a second. Failure. After failure, after failure. And while a handful of dedicated people struggle to achieve the impossible, panic spread to all corners of the earth. Panic and nightmare terror. son, easy. You did your best. We can't have you killing the patient trying to cure the disease now, can we? A magnificent effort, Mitch. Magnificent. It's unfortunate it was doomed to failure from the start. Oh, great. Now, if somebody will just deliver the eulogy, the deceased can be safely laid away to rest. What's the matter with you? Are you all nuts or something? Mitch, are you all right? Sally, how long has it been since the explosion? An hour and a half, two hours, I guess. Oh, we're wasting time. Easy, son, easy. Is that bird still in the air? Why, yes. Yeah. You still want to shoot it down? Well, yes, yes, sure. Well, then, for Pete's sake, let's get with it. General Buzzkirk has had a plane waiting in that field outside of New York ever since we started the experiments. We've got to get the equipment installed on that plane. Mitch, the apparatus didn't work. The experiments failed. Mitch, please lie down in bed. You were hurt in that explosion. <laughs> Oh, of course you don't know. The explosion was no accident. I did it on purpose. I used the Masic atom projector. What? Sure, we had the basic wiring all fouled up. It was a simple matter of adjusting the polarity on the main condenser terminals. I figured it out while you two were asleep, set it up right, and tried it. Oh, wait a minute, McAfee. 
Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that that machine of yours works? Sure. What kind of plane has Buskirk got waiting for you? An old uh, stripped-down B-25. Good. Maneuverability instead of speed. Yeah, the whole operation may depend on being able to turn on a dime. Well, then what in blazes are we waiting for? Well, that's what I've been talking about for ten minutes. Get me my pants, will you, General? Oh, Sally, get out of here. We've installed the ejector nozzle in the tail of the plane, pointing to the back. Rewiring the plane's generating system, plus an added bank of batteries, should give us more than enough power. Now, wait a problem. How many people you need to operate this machine? A doctor, myself, and a calculator. Have you got someone coming up here for Sally to brief in a hurry? I don't want her on that plane. It's coming in from the city now. One question. Why do you aim that gimmick from the tail and not from the nose? Too dangerous in the nose. We might fly into our own missing bombardment and destroy the plane. Chances are, once we locate the bird and we're up in the air, the bird will chase us. And if it doesn't... We'll attract its attention somehow. Sandwiches and coffee. Thank you. Bird's been sighted, heading for New York City. How long will it take you to finish? Hour and a half or two. Still got to connect the thing up. Ah, it's too long. We've got to take off in 15 minutes. You'll have to finish in the air. What about the calculator to replace Sally? Sorry, McAfee, we haven't got any time for that. Jim. Van, you'll fly. I'll backstop you. Clear the field for a takeoff. Right. Well, what are we waiting for? Get the rest of your stuff on board.
Bert's after us. Chasing us. How are you doing? Ready in a minute. Go fast, boy, fast. For God's sake, hurry, man. It's catching up with us fast. Got it. Close those seconds. services. You know, you may want to do something about him before we all wind up exsanguinated. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. All right. Uh, Louie, are you okay now that you know it was just a movie? I guess so. It's just a uh, childhood fear of mine. It's, I can't help it. It's a little embarrassing for a werewolf function. Beaver hunter. Aren't we all? Yeah, you know, I guess I, I guess it's just an old folk tale. It, it ain't true. It's just something people made up. That's right, Louie. It's like that old Klingon conspiracy theory. Except for the work hypothesis. You say tomato, I say tomato. Anyhow, you take care of the beaver. I mean, werewolf. I'll take care of the beaver. Mm. Well, I'll share. Okay. And we'll handle any giant birds that come up. Okay. That sounds like a good idea. Look, I got you. You forgot your hat. Folks, join us in October for our Halloween special, House on Haunted Hill. Boys, wait on me.